Hello everyone, it's good to see you all once again. This is another episode of Ministerial Tutorial. So we are going to look at the uh, letter I and I stands for identity. So let me read to you from 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 7. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. So identity, so what is identity? Identity is something that we are known by. Uh, to ourselves as well as to those around us so it's it's very important because uh, either intentionally or without our own knowledge or uh, because of what's going on around us subconsciously you know uh, it is something that we are all concerned about and uh, so as we as we read from this passage this uh, i hope you're all aware of what is happening uh, around this verse you know if you're not i would request you to go and read first samuel chapter 17 and 18 where david fights the goliath fights the giant called goliath and defeats him and that's when they are returning back to the uh, kingdom and uh, along with the king saul and the ladies you know the ladies and everyone the choir you, choir you can say they are singing the praises of both saul as well as david and for David, it was good because he was he was being praised for his uh, daring attempt, or rather, you can say he was being praised for his success. He was being praised for his achievement. And Saul, on the other hand, he was he was not being praised at the same level as David. He he was given a less number of uh, praise when compared to David. So, if you see, you know, sometimes in our lives, that's what happens. We are being compared. And, you know, the worldly systems, you can say here, as we saw, you know, the women and the others, you know, they sang as the, as the victory, as the victory march was going on, they sang and they praised to David more than Saul. And so if you, if you go on and read the 18th chapter, the things that follows after this verse, Saul becomes jealous of David and he even tries to kill uh, David and they never, they, both of them never got, got well together. Uh, till Saul's death. So what I'm trying to say is why that thing happened was because of the praises that was given to David, Saul's identity was broken. Saul lost his identity. You know, Saul was made king. Saul was uh, selected by God himself and he was given the uh, job of ruling the people of Israel. But here, because of the praise that David was receiving, he lost his identity. His identity was broken. And on the other hand, David, David's identity uh, went up a notch. David was given a wonderful reception. He was praised and he was praised more than uh, Saul, Saul, who is uh, his king. So if you see, so as I said, even in our lives today, uh, the worldly system, that's how it works. The worldly system or the worldly people, they derive their, their identity by the success. They derive their, their identity by what they possess. They derive their identity by their education. They derive their identity by the by the by by their financial strength, by their financial muscle. They derive the uh, their identity by the authority they have because they may be in a higher position in the government. Okay, so that's that's how the world defines identity. But how the Bible defines identity is different because. You will know your real identity only when you know the Father. Or you can say you will know your real identity only when you have a relationship with, with God, uh, only when you have a relationship with the Lord. And most importantly, you should know God as your own Father. Unless you have that relationship, unless you have that relation with God, unless you know God as your own Father, you will not know who you are. You will not know the purpose for which you are living on this earth. You know, so this is one uh, example that I gave you. If you go and read 1 Samuel 29, there D David is now running for his life and he's staying away from Saul. He has been taken care by a king called, uh, I think... Uh, uh, Philistines, I think he was under the. I'm not going to. Yeah, it's his name is Ashish. So if you read First Samuel chapter 29, you will find the uh, find the narrative over there. So there, uh, the people of uh, the king's people, uh, they say, you know, we can't keep this David because David is running away from Saul. He is scared of Saul and he's running for his life and he has uh, he has come. He he's living with this king now, but the people of the people. Uh, of that kingdom are saying, you know, David is such a mighty man, mighty man, he can kill ten thousands of people. So let us not 
have him around us he might cause us our kingdom some trouble so let so send him out so what i'm trying to say is the same david who was praised who was said who was given a title saying he can kill 10000s he killed 10000s that same title is now coming back to bite him coming back to haunt him you know the same title is making those people to drive him out of that city driving out of the city where he was uh, where he has taken refuge so what i am saying is if you are going to derive your identity from the world if you are going to derive your identity by what people say about you if you are going to derive your identity by the things that you possess by the financial strength that you have you will lose it i'm saying that's what i'm saying that is not right that identity will be changing all the time that identity that identity will not be constant okay so uh, if you look at the life of jesus you know when jesus came he he lived on this earth and when he was there he never derived his identity based on what the people told him for example when he went to baptize uh, by john by john the baptist john said lord i cannot baptize you you are the son of god you are, you 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 have to you are the one who is supposed to be baptizing me but did jesus take that as a compliment and he said okay yes yes that's my identity so you know i am the son of god and i cannot be baptized by an ordinary man no he never said that he said no it is right for you to uh, do all this righteousness unto god so at the end of that uh, at the end of that uh, incident if you will see god himself speaks from the heaven and says this is my son in whom i am well pleased so what i'm trying to say say through this is jesus knew his identity because he had a relationship with god as his father because he had a relationship with the father okay because he had that relationship with the father he knew who he was he was never bothered whether people cursed him whether people you know people said uh, people praised him whether people you know they were ready to stone him at times they gave him the greatest welcome at some greatest welcome uh, at some at certain point of time but that those things the things that that was happening around him he never derived his identity from that you know you know at many at some point people said you are the king you are the king of israel you should rule us you should rule us i come on let's make you as the king come on let's make you as the king but those things never uh, you know jesus never derived his identity from those things he always derived his identity based on the relationship he had with his father so whoever it is right now listening to to me uh, sorry right now listening uh, what is your identity what are you trying to achieve so if you are going to uh, if you are going to uh, identify yourself if you are going to search your identity based on the things that you possess just like the worldly people do you will be striving to achieve that goal you know you will not be satisfied with your life at all you will always be you know worried about your bank account you will be always be worried about uh the wealth that you are going to possess the places of the places the houses the lands you know if you are going to look at the the way the society defines you the the way society is you will say okay i am still i am still living in a rented house people will not you know people will not give me respect i need to build my own house i need to have a own house if that is what if your if own house is what is going to determine your identity then you have got it then you have got everything completely wrong the same way it can be anything you, you know if you are in your workplace you may you know at your workplace you may be worked there for 5 to 6 years and still you haven't got a promotion and you are thinking oh my god i have got a promotion only if i reach this managerial role then people will respect me then only i will be then only i then only that is my identity so are you someone who is thinking like that the same way you know it it can be applied to any anything in our life you know because we are always looking at those around us the the how the world defines identity how the society is because we are worried if we if we don't if we don't reach this 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 uh place in society if we don't receive if we don't receive such honor if we don't uh have such money we will not be accepted in the society we will be look we will be uh, looked down by the society so that fear drives us that fear you know it it, it it never allows us to rest that fear of not being accepted by the society why why we have that fear why we are why we are always striving to do better why we are always striving to you know uh, build houses why we are always striving to do better than my neighbor why we are always trying to do better than my cousin why we are doing why we are always striving to do better than my coworker 
Why? Because we don't know our identity is. We don't know what our identity is because we just want to do one step better than our neighbor. We just want to do one step better than our relative. We think that if we do that, if we achieve that, then they will respect me. Then I will have an identity. Yes. Okay. This is blessing. He has two houses. He has, he's the, uh, he's holding a very high position in such an MNC and all that. No, my friend, no, my friend, you have got it completely wrong. That is not your identity. That is not your identity. You know what your identity is? Being called the son of God. So do you know God as your father? If you're not, I urge you, I advise you to go right now and talk to the Lord and ask him to reveal himself as a father to you. Because only when you know God as your father, that's when the real identity comes. You will know, yes, I am the son of the most Hi God, that is my identity. Yes, I. So when you know that, when you when you when you know that your true, true identity comes from God, that your true identity is being the son of God, being a son of God. Why I say that? Because we have been uh, dead to our sins in Jesus Christ when He died for us on the cross, and we rose again, and He rose again, and we too rose again with Him. So now we are born again. Now we are born. With the seed of God, born from the seed of God, we have the uh, we have the uh, qualities of God, or rather, we have the uh, DNA of God in our lives. So I can proudly say, I am the Son of God. I am a Son of God, just like Jesus was. So that is your identity. You can say that too. It doesn't matter whether it, it whether it sounds right, whether you feel right, but that is the fact. That is the truth. That's what the Word of God says. So you have to know your identity. Uh, when you have a relationship with the father so when you know that identity you will say it doesn't matter what it is i can do all the all thing all things through christ why you say that because you know that your identity is found in christ when you know that your identity is found in christ you will say yes i am a son of god just like jesus was i can do all things through christ because i my identity is found in him so this is what i wanted to tell you today through this uh, message that don't look at the people around you and define yourself and define your life. Don't say, you know, I'm not like this. I haven't got any money. I haven't got uh, wealth. I haven't got, you know, I don't have proper health and all that. Your identity is you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Whether you feel it or not, whether the society says, whether the society accepts accept it or not, whether you yourself accept it or not, that is a fact. That is, the, that is what the word of God says. So, the question is, are you ready to accept that as your own identity, as your real identity? So the first place or the first step to knowing your identity, identity is to have a relationship with the father. That's why Jesus said, you know, he said of a man who was very wealthy, he said, if you're going to gain the whole world and yet lose your soul, what's going to, what, what good it's going to do to you? So what, what does it mean to gain the whole world? It doesn't mean you're going to buy the whole world. It means you are trying to, you know, you are you are striving hard. You are you are you are working hard. You are, you know, you are you are um, uh, saving your money. You are trying hard, and you know, you are doing your doing beyond your ability. You are working twenty four by seven to attain what a status in the society, so that you will be accepted in the society. If you are someone like that, you are trying to gain the world. You are not trying to be yourself. You are not trying trying to live from the identity of God, but you're trying to get, get up, but you're trying to gain the world. That's what Jesus meant. He's saying, stop doing that. Stop trying to gain the world. Stop trying to uh, attain a status in the society. That will all come automatically if you know who you really are. If you know who you really are, yes, that's, that's a wonderful thing. If you know your identity in Christ, all the rest of the things will follow you automatically and the world will know that you are the son of God, that you are a follower of Christ. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time, O Lord Jesus. Thank you for reminding us that our identity comes from you, comes from knowing you as a father. Not based on what we have, not based on the wealth, not based on, not based on our bank balances, not based on where I live, not based on the kind of house that I live, not based on the kind of restaurants and hotels that I go, not based on the clothes or the branded items that I wear. No, it, it, it's nothing. It, these things never doesn't define my identity my identity comes from you lord my identity comes from you because i am your son 
because you because we are united with Christ and we were united with Christ in his death and resurrection and now we we are seated with Christ in heavenly places and that is my identity yes that is my identity i pray that everyone watching right now whoever doesn't know who they are i pray that you will open their eyes and that they will know who they are in Christ help them to find themselves in Christ thank you holy spirit i pray that you will give them that revelation right now that as they read the word of god that you yourself will give them the revelation and that they were their identity that they should go back to the real identity let them not live based on a false identity i thank you and we give you all the glory in jesus name i pray amen and amen uh, god bless you so uh, meditate on these lines so your identity comes from knowing god as your father and so if you if you want if you want there are other messages that i have spoken under the series called ministerial tutorial so those things will be appearing right now in the, on your screens uh, the playlist and all those so if you want to check it out do check it out and uh, yes so uh, don't forget to check it out and uh, may god be with you amen